AMD and Nvidia are giving a cut to the US government. AOL is cutting their dial up and AMD's cutting the X3D CPUs for AM4. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, August 12th. 2025. We're going to start off today with details that came out yesterday regarding AMD and Nvidia being able to sell some of their higher end chips to China and with details concerning them having to pay a 15% fee of whatever their sales are to the US government. Now this was initially reported by Reuters that this was going on and it wasn't quite clear what the terms of this agreement are but it was declared an unusual move and a atypical precedent to be set with the H20 GPUs being sold to China. Now H20 is a little bit older. It's on the hopper architecture instead of the current generation Blackwell, but it is one of the things that has been a hot button issue for both Nvidia as well as geopolitically. You have people in the industry saying things like either selling H20 chips to China is a national security risk, in which case we shouldn't be doing it to begin with, or it's not a national security risk, in which case why are we putting this extra penalty on the sale? But while it was just being confirmed with behind the scenes sources, it turns out that President Trump confirmed this detail later on indicating that he wanted 20% but Jensen negotiated him down to 15% and they're only doing this for the H20 chips but they may do it for Blackwell but it would be a lesser version of the most powerful Blackwell chip. So there's a lot of uncertainty as to where that money is exactly going. Where's the 15% of the revenue? What part of the US government is that getting paid out to? There's also concern from security experts as well as concern from the economic sector thinking that this is a difficult precedent to be set said for just export restrictions happening and being lifted for a cut to the US government. And so we'll have to see how all of this plays out uh, moving forward as we get more details as to where the money's going, how this exactly is going to be taken care of. And we'll make sure to keep you updated here on Hot News, as well as updating you that with President Trump's comments last week on the CEO of Intel needing to leave, it turns out that they are now going to have an audience with one another later this week. The Intel CEO, Le Bouton is going to visit President Trump and discuss wide-ranging conversations such as his investments and everything that is currently going on with Intel. So again, we'll keep you updated as all of that's happening. But if you have an important meeting with an official or somebody that you want to impress, uh, you should definitely check out today's video sponsor. While I might not usually be a cologne guy, I've been wanting to try something new lately. Just taking a quick peek into the world of fragrance can actually be a little overwhelming. Top notes, middle notes, I don't even know what I like yet. Thankfully, today's sponsor Scentbird makes exploring the world of fragrance as easy as it can be. To start my journey, Scentbird sent over a variety of fragrances to choose from. Starting off, I got Historis de Parfums 1828. This is a warm, woodsy, and citrusy fragrance with notes of incense, citrus, eucalyptus, and nutmeg. This is definitely a night out there. I also received Viva More Parfums Addiction Absolute. This is also a woodsy scent, but with some rich and slight sweetness from the notes of Madagascan vanilla, dry fruits accord, amber, Jamaican rum, and French cognac. I could see myself wearing this on special occasions or date nights with my wife. And while I haven't watched the show, Yellowstone Ride from True Western might be good enough to make me a fan. This smoky and woodsy scent is built with notes of charred vanilla, crisp clary sage, raw bergamot, rough cut tobacco, and smoked whiskey. This encapsulates everything nice about sitting around a campfire and would feel right at home for an evening barbecue with the fellas. And last up, Scentbird gave me Devour by English Laundry. Now, despite the name, it doesn't smell like used football socks and mushy peas, bro. This fresh and masculine scent might actually be my favorite from the selection. The notes of patchouli, bergamot, fresh basil, pink peppercorn, and fresh rain accord offer a citrusy and subtly sweet aroma that makes for a versatile and classic fragrance. Great for everyday wear. Sampling with Scentbird means you can shop affordable with minimal risk, since you don't have to go straight to a full-size bottle. At just $8 for your first month and less than $17 for subsequent months, there's no better way to sample fragrances, and has made it extremely easy for a newbie like me. You're even getting 30 day supplies of each fragrance in these carry size bottles. And if you need a little extra help deciding, you can take their scent quiz to help them steer you in a preferred direction. You can choose from over 900 fragrances to sample. Then you can even commit to the full size bottle once you've found your signature set. They also include this convenient little case that locks the atomizer so you don't end up with the best smelling pocket at the office. If you're looking to find your signature scent, try Scentbird now. Take my coupon code UFDTech when you scan the QR code here or click the link in the bio. 
you'll save yourself 55% off, or in other words, just eight little buckaroos. Delivery is free right to your door, and you'll get one of those nifty cases too. Thanks to Scentbird for sponsor. But just like I like the scent of Scentbird, I also like the scent of new Intel GPUs, and we're getting more details coming out of a Mesa PCIe device ID list indicating that there might be low-end Battle Mage cards coming out, potentially B380s that might be hitting the market. We don't have a ton of detail besides the fact that it's just being listed, but as we learn more, I'll keep you updated on all of that. But speaking of low end, let's talk about some low end internet, 56K dial up modems with all of those weird noises. Those are going away. AOL, after 34 years, is discontinuing their dial up service as of September 30th. Now they had thousands of people who are still using this in the year 2025, which, you know, is not necessarily that strange considering there's still significant portions of the US country that don't have access to high-speed broadband. However, that is slowly being transferred over to things like Starlink and satellite internet. But I'm just surprised I would have thought AOL canceled this years ago, but no, it uh, it held strong through many, many years. And now finally in the year 2025, it is ending, which is also what Reddit is choosing to do with access to the internet archive. The Wayback Machine is no longer going to be able to get access to certain portions of Reddit, especially large portions of Reddit that essentially aren't the homepage. And the reason for this is because Reddit does doesn't want AI scraping all of the data from them. And while they have tried to block it from the Reddit site directly, they allegedly found out that the internet archive has had AI bots scraping Reddit data off of the archive. And therefore they are going to be removing some of the ability for the internet archive to document certain pages, especially mostly in subreddits. And it's mostly just gonna be the most popular stories for the day. And Reese better have some popular deals for you save you money. Yo, welcome back to UFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet, and I'll jump straight into the deals for you guys today. Starting off, we have the Logitech G305 Lightspeed Wireless Gaming Mouse for only $29.99, making it $20 off. But then next up, we have the Cooler Master 240 Elite Liquid White AIO CPU Liquid Cooler for only $59.99, making it $16 off. And then lastly, we have this MSI Optics 34-inch 3440 by 1440 144 hertz. That's a lot of repeating numbers right there. Curved VA Gaming Monitor, which you can grab for only $290 dollars 99 making it $40 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, it looks like Apple is giving people a great deal when it comes to a low-end MacBook. Looks like it's going to be coming out sometime soon. Reports are that it's going into production and should cost around six to $700. Now, this is not the first time that we're hearing about this particular MacBook. There were reports that came out a few months ago indicating that Apple was working on putting an iPhone chip into a MacBook shell. So something like the A18 Pro or the A19, something like that going into the next generation low end MacBook, potentially just being called the MacBook below the air, which while that might seem like a downgrade, the current A18 Pro can match the M1 chip in a lot of different benchmarks. So it's not that much of a step backward. And so it looks like Apple's looking to get into the more lower end market, which is still, you know, not the cheapest laptops out there. It's not gonna be Chromebook pricing, but it's also going to be fairly competitive, especially with the MacBook being one of the best selling laptops out there. This might even uh, replace that in some segments because it's just going to be that much cheaper for people who want to be on the go, have good battery life and have a no muss, no fuss laptop. Now, obviously the thing that they will likely do is charge you a nose hair and an arm leg for basically any upgrade that you want to do to RAM or storage. And at that point, you're likely going to want to upgrade to a higher end MacBook Air or something like that. And so th they're probably probably still going to segmentize it very heavily, but the lower end versions will likely be more affordable. And just looking at things like the M1 chip, which is about what the A18 Pro is equivalent to, those are currently going for about $649 uh, out on the open internet. And that's about where we're expecting this next generation of low end MacBooks to come in. So it's not that outlandish of a low price. But speaking of low end laptop MacBook uh, entry level, uh, Google and Steam are discontinuing their partnership. Chromebook's not going to be having Steam anymore as of January 1st, 2026. Steam indicating that any games that you have downloaded from this beta will no longer work as of that date and that this is going to be exiting. So it turns out that gaming on devices that mostly school districts give to children is not something that they considered viable or worth the development and they're going to be moving on from that. Allegedly, there was less than 100 games that could work very well on a Chromebook and especially if you didn't have a Chromebook with significant power 
power, like one of their ultras or whatever they ended up calling it. In about half a decade, they really haven't done a whole lot of progression on this, and it looks like there's gonna be none moving forward, which is exactly what is being reported with the X3D chips on AM4, with the last holding vestige of that, the 5700X3D, getting reported that it is going end of life and retailers are no longer able to order it from AMD. And if you've taken a look at the market recently, you could have seen this, especially as we've been looking to buy PC parts for our builds that we do on Fridays here on YouTube or over on Twitch. We struggle to find 5700X3Ds at a reasonable price. It's mostly third party places that are selling them at a premium. And it looks like they have been discontinued for at least a little bit or at least sold out. But now we're getting confirmation from behind the scenes sources that indeed AM4 X3D chips, which were some of the best value gaming chips that you could possibly get on the market right now, they are going end of life. Now, AMD hasn't specifically confirmed this, but with the 5600X3D being a Micro Center exclusive and kind of ending its support as well, and the 5800X3D dying well before this current moment, and the 5700X3D kind of replacing that in the market, it just makes it so that if you want one of these X3D chips, you're likely going to have to go 7800X3D, which they're not at the worst price as possible. $374, I think, is the best like new price that I've seen on it recently, but you still have to get DDR5. It's likely going to be a whole system upgrade for a lot of people. But also, at the same time, selling it into 2025, deep into 2025, AMD did support the AM4 socket for a considerable amount of time. And so, you know, I'm thankful for the years that we had with the 5700X3D. I'm sad to see it go. I wish it would stick around longer. It was a great budget gaming CPU. But let me know what you think of its discontinuation down below in the comments. While I see what you said on Friday's episode of Hot News, we got JBG saying, as a UK PC nerd, yeah, losing e-buyer is definitely sad. It was probably my main go-to whenever I needed good hardware quickly. And then Madness saying, oh no, e-buyers closing? Well, that sucks. In the UK, that's one of the best places to buy hard drives. Looks like I'm not the only person who used them for my storage needs, as so many of their higher capacity drives are quickly going out of stock. I never really purchased much else from them. Unlike with the storage, I could usually find better deals elsewhere, like from scan or overclockers. Such a shame to see they go. I do wonder if the name e-buyer hurt them though. <laughs> Thanks for uh, giving me the input on everything that's going on there. It is a shame that you're losing options when it comes to purchasing stuff, but Elwood purchasing a 9070 XT saying that they literally just went from a 1080 to a 9070 XT a couple weeks ago. That's gonna be fantastic for you. That's a massive upgrade. You're doubling your VRAM, you're significantly improving your gaming performance. I think the 1080 was like one of the first cards that Nvidia like truly marketed as like a 4K capable card and like in 2025, it's really not. And the 9070 XT should be able to do a pretty decent amount of stuff at 4K. So uh, I'm, I hope you're enjoying the heck out of that. I'm so excited when people make those upgrades, those generational leaps. That's the good stuff. That's when it's like so noticeable. Like, you know that you are enjoying something brand new and it feels real good. And then Wootsickle saying, the only reason I'm using NVIDIA cards is for the old shield hooks that let me use Moonlight slash Sunshine for the Steam Deck. I agree. I have been uh, recently uh, putting Moonlight on basically every device that I possibly can. It has been fantastic to play it on my tablet, on my uh, smart TV, on my Steam Deck, and just in any capacity that I want to just uh, boot up my gaming PC. Oh man, Moonlight is so convenient. I've, I've been rocking that a lot. I'm finally almost finished with Final Fantasy VII Rebirth because I was uh, playing on my, my TV this weekend. It was great, I loved it. And then Zath saying, what keyboard is that on your desk? That was, there was a little keyboard that was sitting right here and that actually was featured in a short over the weekend, which was based on uh, copper keycaps that we got sent from a company called Aw Keys. You can check out the short in case you want. Uh, we called it Aw Keys Metal Keycaps. I really like it. It's a, it's a bit beefy, and uh, I do have some struggles with the metal keycaps, but uh, yeah, you can check that out. And then Lunchbox Joe saying five to seven, two generations, and I'm in need to upgrade situation. Uh, Lunchbox Joe, I just have a little uh, statement uh, to say. The RTX 30 series came out in 2020. The RTX 50 series came out in 2025. Uh, that is two generations in five years. So, uh, uh, kind of follows, follows suit. I, I mean, if you want to include the half generations, like, the 40 Super Series. Okay, maybe maybe uh, a little shorter, but two generations appears to be on that lower half of the five to seven year range. Didn't used to be this way. It used to be, uh, you know, we used to get generations quicker, but uh, this that's what it is now. Two generations ago, we were on the 30 Series, and that is uh, five years ago. 
half a decade. That was came out in 2020. Fun times. And I'm done with this fun time. I'm done with this episode of Hot News. I'll see you back here for more of the Haas Tech News sometime. Probably tomorrow. We'll see. We'll see if there's enough news to cover.